Look at this bad boy. Hey guys, welcome back to Tammy Legends and once again, thank you for stopping by. So, if you follow this channel, you'll know we recently got hold of the Tammy DTO2 MS from my buddy Ian in the UK. Absolutely fantastic two-wheel drive buggy. Um, there's a lot of videos with this you've not seen yet but with it. It's running, it's at the track, I've got speed run videos. The thing's pretty epic, I love it. Um, anyway, um, the same guy who bought this off, Ian, had the DFO3 um, MS as well and uh, I had to scrape together some uh, Tamiya tokens which I didn't have because I didn't want to separate them um, and it kind of goes with what I'm trying to achieve with a little bit of a TRF style collection as well um, so I really wanted this so here it is dun, dun, dun. That is a Tamiya DT-03 MS and um, it's a good looking thing isn't it, I think. Um, what I'll do, I'll put a link in the description um, should you want to know more about what the MS is because on the first DT-02 video I did I went into detail what MS means and what, what, what the differences are um, but I don't want to do that again in this video. So, DFO-3 the differences are from the standard. I'll try to cover everything, I'll probably forget. Um, it has standard ball diffs, which a DFO3 has, but this one comes with the slipper clutch. That's a massive upgrade for this car because these diffs are not great. Um, it has a blue alloy adjustable turnbuckles all around. It obviously has the, the nice, gorgeous DFO3 alloy shocks, but it has the white springs and they're very difficult to get hold of. Um, what else is uh, um, obviously body wise it's a step well apart from the wing the body's dark impact but it's got this gorgeous TRF scheme on it it comes with two wings now this is a Tamiya racing wing but it also does come with the um, standard dark impact wing in the kit which is cool but you only get one set of decals so you have to choose which one you're going to use the racing wing looks way better so that's that um, universal drive shafts all round fully ball rest um on the inside it's got this fancy blue battery pin i'm not too sure about that it's it looks great it's blue alloy but it is just a battery pin um it does come um which you'll see later the servo sits right at the back of this car for the steering and it's got a long um out blue alloy um blingy steering arm that goes on I'm sure i've missed something else about it um, standard dual block tyres, I'm sure I've missed something else about it, anyway if I have I'll cover it later, oh, the, it, it comes with a standard metal prop shaft but it does have a bl one blue alloy cup at the front, prop shaft cup, um, and I think that covers basically what the difference is from an MS, so I've had um, a DFO3 before because people were raving about them before I got it, uh, and I actually got the White Impact Limited Edition. These are also lim limited edition. Um, and I ran it, and it was okay to be honest, but I had a problem with the back diff, the back ball diff, and I was only running um, Tamiya Superstock RZ motor. Um, and looked on the forums, and the known, it's a real weak spot. Um, you're supposed to upgrade to ceramic balls in your, in your ball diff, and fit a slipper clutch, so um, I didn't do that. Um, anyway, as I said, this one comes with the slipper clutch, so I am quite, I'm really interested because I'm going to run this one pretty hard. Now this is a brand new built, never run car, and um, they're pretty rare now, and if you can find them, they're bloody expensive as well. Same with the DTR2s, but I just think collection wise, to have both of these MF, MF, <laughs> MSs, then there is another one, there's a TTR2B MS, but not that bothered about that one. That came out in 2017. This one came out a year after the DTR2. Off top of me, this was 2007, and the DFR3 came out in 2008. And that's pretty much it. So the purpose of this video is, um, because it's a brand new build, the, the diffs seem too loose to me. <laughs> Ball diffs again. So I'm gonna, drop, I'm gonna drop the gearbox. This is really easy to get the diffs out. 
I'm going to drop both diffs out and the front and back are different. We'll nip them up. There's no thrust washer plates on these ones. It's a much more basic design. So I don't feel like I have to take the actual diffs apart on this one. Just going to take them out, tighten them up, have a good look, make sure there's plenty of grease, uh, diff, diff oil on them. Um, and put them back in and then we're going to put the Tamiya Superstock BZ motor in this with the T I always get this mixed up is it the TEU 302 BK brushed speed controller I just use that now on a load of cars and uh, I do that because I, I know how that runs in all the different cars so when I put it in this one I'll be able to compare how this car runs um, what else is there? So yeah, we're going to get it absolutely ready to run um, and get out. Running wise, the plan is to first of all get it out on tarmac because it'll need setting up. It's never run before, so I want to make sure the diffs are right, especially the clip slipper clutch is doing what it's supposed to do. And mess around with some cones and stuff like we've done with all the other cars. And once it's set up, then in another video, we'll get this to the track, which I'm going to put a lot of scratches on it. I'm doing that for you guys. You better give me a like for that. Um, I've actually changed now. If this, if I'd have had this car three, four years ago, it wouldn't have run ever. It would have stayed absolutely mint. But my mentality's changed slightly now. Um, and I do enjoy running them, even if it's just a couple of times. But as you've seen on that, that track video I take them to, it, it kind of knocks them out. So. Body wise it'll be fine, but it will put a few scratches on underneath, but I'm cool with that. And then I'll retire it after that. That's same what I've, with detail two is retired now, and we'll, uh, we'll bang them in the glass cabinets, which is cool. So, as usual, that's enough uh, dribble. Um, let's get the body and the wing off, wheels and tyres off, and, um, and get into these diffs, and we might as well get working on those first. So, just before we get into it, um, Ian who I bought them off has been on at me and rightly so in the DTR2 video I mentioned that the rear tyres were just standard dual blocks and he messaged me straight away he goes what are you saying that for no they're not they're completely different and they actually are they have a different tread and apparently these I'm not too sure what they're called and I believe they're pretty rare to get hold of now um, but yeah I just thought they were only dual blocks but if you can see you, down the centre you can see the different pattern and um, completely different size as well, aren't they? Which is really interesting. So there's a bit of nerdy information for you. The DT2, the DTO2 MS does come with a very tire that's not a dual block. I'm gonna have to do some research and tell for, for tell you what that's called. Right, that's what the DFO3 looks like close up, and it's you won't kick it out of bed, would you? It's it's a looker. I'm going to say straight off the bat, I'm not a massive fan so far of a DFO3 and I'm really hoping that this one changes my mind. Looks wise, it certainly does. It looks it looks superb. Um, it looks really good. I've got, it, I've got it set as low as possible at the moment, um, which that's the way I'll run it. The only thing I've done so far, I've added the blue wheel nuts to it just to match. Um, but it really does look a nice thing. Let's just whiz the shell off. And that's what it looks like with the top off. So, let's see if I can hold this. So obviously, DF4 alloy shocks, the fancy turnbuckles. Then if we go around this side, it's got this, as I say, blue alloy um, battery pin. That's to hop up the um, alloy prop shaft. That's a standard DF4 prop shaft metal it comes with. Um, it also comes with three of these um, motor heat sinks, two go on the outside casing, and there's one that goes on the inside. Um, universal drive shafts all round and slipper clutch is there and probably can't do it yes I can that comes off so you can make the adjustments when you're out and about which we will be doing um, as I say the servo goes here for the steering and then there's a fancy blue alloy rod that goes to um, the front steering mechanism I think that's oh it's got I tell you that's what I've missed it's got a centre one way on it as well Center's probably the wrong word, but it's it's it, yeah it's it's a one way. Now I'm not sure. So you see it's driving. If I hold the front wheels and go backwards, it doesn't drive. But forwards, all four. So that's going to be a bit of an issue. Well, it's not going to be an issue as such. But on tarmac, that's uh, I've lost my four wheel drive braking, which I I kind of enjoy. 
But um, yeah, that'll be the first um, one way that we've taken to the track so far. So I'll be interested to see how that performs. Right, now let's get into it. Right then, so we've got to strip down to this level. This is a really good chassis to work on. I um, I like the DFO3 to work on. It's uh, Everything's pretty easy to get to. So I have gone a little bit further. I've stripped the um, slipper clutch completely down because I want to have a look at the spur gear options. It comes with a lot of different gear ratio options with this kit. Um, so when we come to build that back up, I'll dig the manual out because I want to see exactly what spur and pinion are best to use. Um, what else have I done? So as you can see, very basic design. The rear, come. there's a, a, a plastic cover on the back. I've taken that out and that just means the rear diff can just pop out like that. Very straightforward. Now, to me, that is too, too, that needs tightening up. Oops, that needs tightening up quite a lot. Um, so what I will do um, is, I'll just pop that in out of the way so I don't lose it. Um, yeah, what I will do is we'll tighten that up fully and then um, probably take it back quarter or half a turn. I'll, I'll read the instructions and see what it is. The front diff is of completely different design, big bevel gear on the front. Um, and that, that diff's quite a bit tighter but again um, and I, I, again I said earlier I'm not going to strip it down there looks to be plenty of um, diff grease in there which is awesome um, one other thing I was looking for I was trying to figure out where the centre one way was and it's actually in here which obviously makes perfect sense now let me bring the camera over a little bit um, I was thinking it'd be in this metal gear here, but no, that wouldn't work, would it? So the actual center bear, one way bearing is underneath this bevel gear, which is cool. Only thing I would have liked to see with this MS kit, I would have liked a, a blue alloy prop shaft just to match it. I think that would have looked very blingy, but you know, it's no biggie. So what I'll do now is I'll do it off camera because it's not exciting. I'll tighten the diffs up to where I think they should need to be and then we'll bang that back together. Right, that's all that built back up. Um, diffs feel way tighter. I did nip the front up slightly more, rightly or wrongly, uh, and it does feel slightly tighter than the um, the front, sorry, than the rear, but uh, the rear is now a lot stiffer than it was, and in my opinion, it's where it wants to be. Now, obviously, this is, on, this is going to be its first run anyway, so once we put a battery through it, we'll revisit the diffs. And we'll um, we'll tighten them back up because obviously we need to bed in because they're new. Um, so yeah, I'm re relatively happy with that. So next up is um, just to assemble the slipper clutch. Now um, I noticed that it comes with three different spurs. It comes with this black one, and this is an 82 tooth pin, uh, spur. Um, and but it does come with a 78, and I believe an 85. I'll just try. So that's the ratios here. So what Tamiya class as normal is a 26 tooth pinion which this kit comes with and it gives you two options of either using the 82 or the 85 spur. I'm just going to stick with the 82 which gives us a ratio of 9.64. I think that's good enough. Um, you can sort of wring the neck of it if you go to, what spur is it, if you, put the, if you fit the 78 tooth spur with the 29 tooth pinion you can get the ratio down to 8.22. So um, if you're wanting some more speed, you can definitely do that. But obviously, I'll just go with the standard kit settings, which is great. So yeah, we've just got to um, now build this up. Not a great deal of information on setting the slipper clutch up. It, all it says is to, to decrease traction of slipper clutch, loosen the nut from standard position. And it's telling you it just wants, once the nut's on, it wants a one mil gap to the end of the, at the end of the thread showing. So that'll be a bit of a suck it and see when we get it out to see if it's if it's slipping or if it's too grippy or what. But again, that's the whole process of getting it out running to see what it does. Um, so I'll fit the slipper clutch, but in the, in, at the same time then we need to be getting the motor in as well. So um, yeah, let's get that done. Right, so I've assembled the slipper clutch to the instructions. In fact, I've left it slightly loose. It's asking for a full mill to come through of the thread. And I'm just over flush. Um, but I thought I'd just stick the back tyres on just to get a feel for this slipper. So if obviously if I clamp the back end down and then move the spur to feel how much that is slipping. I think I put a fair bit of force on that to be honest. So I think I'm going to leave it with that and again once we get it out 
we can have a play. We'll just take the trusty spanner with us and then we can nip it up um, if it's slipping about too much. Okay, that's the motor in. Tamiya Superstock BZ. Um, making sure I get the wires in the right position because there's really not a lot of room in this car and um, anything can affect how the body shell sits on. Anyway, that's in position and we've got the meshing pretty much cock on. That feels good. So what I'll, what's left to do is now I'll stick the gearbox cover back on. As I say, the, the it's got the pip in the middle that comes off so you can adjust this while you're running it. Um, and then we'll um, concentrate on the steering. Right, so I've just done a little mock-up of the radio gear um, to centre the servo. So I'll give that full steering rate, but obviously at the same time I could just test the motor. Get some of that grease around before we run it. So yeah, I just need to now figure out um, if the servo's in the right direction or not. So let's get that in the car. Right, boom, we have steering. Look at that sexy arm there in the blue. That's why I think the prop shaft should have been blue as well. And it had just finished it off. I actually had a look on eBay last night to see if they do a blue blingy one, but um, I couldn't find it. Um, I'm sure I've seen DF-03s with blue bars, but uh, prop shaft, sorry. Anyway, we've got steering, so I've set it up right way around. I've not checked the trim yet, we'll do that when we're out. Pretty cool. Throttle. Yeah, baby. That's uh, almost ready to go. So now the fun part. Let's get the receiver and the speed off stuck down and try to tidy this wiring up because space is such an issue with this car. It's. Uh, I remember when I did the white impact, just how bad it was. So if you imagine all that centre section's battery. Um, so I'm guessing, is that wide, too wide? Oh no, that receiver's gonna fit. What about the uh, speedo going on its side? So in fact, we're gonna have to put them both. Wow, that's tight. I was thinking receiver might go there, but that ain't gonna fit. This is a, a, a tactic receiver I use, or radio so set antennaless. I, I love antennaless gear. It's so much easier and they run great. But uh, yeah, it looks like we're going to have to do something like that, but get the wires, turn the speed around so it's facing the other way. Right, I'll get all that stuck down and let's see what we can do with that wiring. Right, pretty tight in there. <laughs> um, funny enough, the speedo I'm using um, is the one in the manual for it. <clears throat> Excuse me, and it, um, it goes on its end, um, which gives you a little bit more space here. So I've made sure I've got the motor wires tie wrapped here also with the servo wire underneath a prop shaft. So I'm happy with that. And then everything else is just sort of crunched down here. Um, so it might look a little bit messy, but um, yeah, let's just make sure that body fits. And that's all gone to plan perfectly. So I've, I've left it switched on. Yeah, very happy with that. And uh, the bodies are not raised up. Um, if I'm ultra critical, the front two mounts are solid. The rear mount has got a little bit of play, so I could really put an O-ring on there, to be honest. Or my plan was just to maybe Velcro the sides slightly, but I put the, the shell is absolutely solid. So, yeah. Yeah, I've got to be happy with that. Boom! So, just thought I'd uh, do a ride height now. As I say, first run's just on tarmac, nothing special, so I'm, I'm sitting it a little bit lower. Um, which is no adjustment on the shot collars on the rear, so it's got a lot of droop. Um, but obviously it's going to be on tarmac, so it's not going to be leaving the ground. Have just brought the, the front collars down, what would you say, four, maybe five mil, um, just to take up. Again, it's got droop, but just to give it the extra it needed. don't know if you can see it working, but really nice damping. Very nice. Yeah, that's great. Right, that bottomed out, but that was too high anyway. Still bottoming out there. Anyway, obviously, once we've done the first run, then we'll get it to the uh, track where we'll really have to beef that suspension up. 
but um, yeah, I mean that feels awesome. Looks great. Now, only one thing I've got to try. Um, I'm not. I don't want to run brand new tyres on tarmac, um, so I'm just going to dig my dished wheels out that I normally use for running on the tarmac and make sure that they, they fit this car. Um, because if they don't, then I'm going to have to glue a set of these up, um, which I don't enjoy doing. But um, yeah, I, I'm getting to that stage now where I'm a little bit excited. Um, I wasn't overly looking forward to getting the electrics in this one, just because I've done it before and it's tight. But um, yeah, that went together really smoothly, to be honest. Um, now I've got the motor and diffs in. Obviously the front's one way, so it just spins, so you can only feel the diff that way. Feels okay. Um, and the rear, yeah, they're roughly the same to be fair, but um, yeah, mm, yeah, I was going to start talking about ball diffs again, but I won't because I know I'm doing that all the time on recent videos. Um, right, let's try those other wheels. So, she's ready to rock, and I am super excited about running this one. Um, when I started the video, I wasn't that bothered, it was just a case of it's another car on the channel, be keeping this one and we'll just run it and just go through the motions of it but now I've got it to this stage yeah I, I am quite excited to see how it runs now unfortunately my um, Tamiya TRF dished wheels and tyres I normally use for tarmac won't fit on the um, the knuckle hits on the inside of the wheel so then I thought well I've got a very new set of um, db one Durga tyres different fitment so I put the front tiny little like six mil or like eight mil hex on it but again that's hitting on those knuckles as well so i am a little bit gutted i'm gonna have to use the brand new wheels and tires now i'm not gonna go crazy on tarmac anyway but after that video then all being well i probably want to take this to take this to the little track we found as well so yeah i'm it's a bit i'm a bit gutted um and it also means obviously i have to glue these these tires now um, and gluing them makes a mess in my opinion <sighs> so I can buy another set of wheels and tyres for this no problem but these these dual blocks at the moment you're probably for a full set on it off eBay you're looking at what they're 20 40 about 52 dollars that's Canadian so in your money in the UK 52 would be, be about 28 quid 30 quid for a full set of tyres and then obviously you've got your wheels as well that's if you know if I want to make it back to kind of a shelf queen, but um, yeah, it is what it is. I haven't got anything else to run. Oh, oh, no, no. I need I need tarmac tires. I was then thinking to put some like old school egress wheels and tires on it, not spikes. I've got some used tires downstairs, but no, no. Let's just run it how it was supposed to be run. Um, so anyway guys I hope you enjoyed this video next time you see this bad boy it'll be running and then again one after that it'll be on the track and jumping around hopefully so guys once again thanks so much for watching it's really appreciated if you are new to this channel if you could please consider liking and subscribing to support us if you do that smash that notification bell for our weekly videos and as always guys happy seeing.